Income tax 2023-2024. W-2 income tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can lessen the sting of the IRS smack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Form 1040 example problem using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, starting at our normal starting point with Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang tax man, living in 90210 Beverly Hills. We're back to a single filer status to start off with, no dependents. W-2 wages are starting point as usual, 100,000. Standard deduction for a single filer, 13,850, getting us to the 86,150 taxable income. Mirroring that in our Excel worksheet, 100,000, 13,850 standard deduction, 86,150 taxable income. The tax calculated by the software on page two was 14,266, as we could see on page two here, 14,266. And then we'll get into the uh, payments or withholdings, which we don't have at this point in time at our starting point. Now, when we think about the first line item here, this is going to be our most common line item we first think about typically coming from that W-2 form. So let's take a look at a W-2 form. The most important boxes typically will be box one and two, those having the big impact on the tax return. Box one, providing the federal income tax. Box two, the withholdings that the employer was forced to take out of the employee uh, wages and then of course we have box three which is going to be the social security which is usually going to be more of a reporting form here possibly not having a big income tax effect because it's a social security tax social security taxes and then box five is the medicare similar kind of thing you can see box one three and five then are the actual three forms or, or three types of income which could be all the same, but also could differ. And then oftentimes the confusion comes over in these boxes over here where they could have different things that are, are basically taking place, type, types of benefits, for example. And then we also have this checkbox that could be important for with regards to the retirement, for example. If you have state taxes, then the state information is gonna be important down below. States could have an income tax, but they may not. They may be providing their, their tax needs with, say, a sales tax. For example, we here focused in on the federal, on the federal side of things. Now, also note that when you see anything marked in, say, box 12, you'll, you'll also have the instructions. If the instructions will typically come with the W-2. If they're not provided by the client, you can go to the IRS website and then pick up the instructions. So you can look at the instructions from the IRS. So here's a part of those instructions and then instructions for uh, the employee. And you can see here we have importantly the box 12 instructions, which could give you more information if you're confused about something that's entered in box 12 and possibly have some code in it here or say on the next page once again you have more of kind of codes that could be in there to help give you indication of what is included in box 12. And then if you need to do further research based on this information, you can drill down from there and further your research. All right, so let's just run a couple of our examples. This first one, we had 40,000 in wages 
and everything was the same for the wages, box one, three, and five being the same because there were no 401k plan withholdings and they didn't hit the cap for social security. What would, what would that look like over here? We're gonna go, okay, let's say it's W2 income, 40,000 of the income, and then the federal income tax, you have to do the data input for this one because it's not a flat tax. The software cannot calculate it. So we're gonna say it came out to 4,000. I'm gonna say 4,000. Now notice here, it's guessing, this software is guessing that the social security wages is the same. That is not a guaranteed, that will not always be the case, but could often be the case, and it's correct in this case. If this number is correct, then the social security will be calculated for us because it's in essence a flat tax. So if I have the 40,000 social security wages, then 0.062 is gonna be the uh, social security rate given us to the, the 2480. So I don't actually have to do the data input there. The same is true for the Medicare wages. It's guessing that's the same as the total wages. May not always be the case, but often the case once I get that number correct, the software can calculate the tax because it's basically a flat tax rate, 40,000 times 0.0145. In this case, that's going to give us the 850. So, if we, and obviously you're going to have to give more information with regards to the employer information on the W-2 form, such as the identification number and the address, because as the we can give more information to the government because of computers they want more information they want to know everything about you they're going to put that computer chip right on your forehead pretty soon drill it in there so you can't you know you can't get it out of there because they're not liking the fact that they have to rely on the cell phones these days because then you could put that thing down if you wanted to whereas if they drilled that chip right in your forehead okay any case let's uh if we scroll down here, we've got the 40,000 of wages now, and then we still have the standard deduction, the 13,850. We can mirror that over here. That means the taxable income is at 86,150. So we, ha we have uh, the taxable income. Wait, what did happen? W2 income. Let's change the income. 40,000. Getting ahead of yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself. 26,150. I hate waiting for myself. I'm so slow. You have to wait for yourself. Uh, page two tax is calculated at 2921. So then we're going to go, okay, 2921. And then there it is. And then we saw that the withholdings, 4,000. So I'm going to go and say, okay, on the withholdings, payments, and credits tab, I'll say W2, uh, first job, W2, W2, one was I withheld uh 4000 should get it from here 4000 boom 4000 that's going to pull on to the my formula so there's the 4000 so i have a refund of 1079 and so i can say okay does that tie out here 1079 uh, on the refund so that's the general uh basic basic type of uh w2 form obviously we could have more than one uh, w-2 form so we could have imagined that we worked at two locations so if i was to do that and so let's just say we doubled this w-2 form and this was w-2 one again i'm going to use the same location but let's say this is another forty thousand. we'll just double it four thousand so now i have two w-2 forms that are adding up to a total of eighty thousand both of them withheld the uh, 8,000, so we have the social security wages up to the 80,000 and so on uh, and so forth. If I go back on over and say, okay, let's check that out. So now I've got the 80,000. If I mirror that on this side, I'm gonna say income. This was second W-2 form, W-2-2 of 40,000. And then we withheld another on w to to 4000 total withholdings 8000 pulling that over so that means 80000 minus the 13 out uh, 850 same standard deduction should get us to 66150 so if i look at page 1 13850 gets to the 66150 page 2 calculating the tax at the 9866 so i'm going to plug that in 9866 
and the payments were 8,000. So now we have an amount due of uh, 81866. So 1866 and uh, uh, and so then there's a the penalty of 45. Let's put 45 to get us to, to the 1911. Now you might say, how in the world did that happen? Because I got a refund at 40,000 and then I doubled everything, including the withholdings, and now I owe money. Why? Because because we have a progressive tax rate. <laughs> that second 40,000 was taxed as a, as a much higher tax rate. The first 40,000 highest bracket was at was at the 12%. The highest dollar amount on that last 40,000 uh, was taxed at a marginal rate or the last t rate of the 25%. That's the progressive uh, tax system. Now, note that you could run into it. Notice what's happening here is we're not doing much with with the Social Security and Medicare because these are flat taxes. They're not having a big impact on the tax return because these are kind of more informational things because they've already been paid through the employer withholding. But you can imagine that cap happening where we saw that the cap, I believe, is at the 160200 What if you had two different W-2s where the combined wages goes over that cap? that could cause a problem. Let me show you what I mean. So we're going to say, let's go back on over to the detail. And let's say that this second one is a uh, hundred and a hundred and fifty thousand, right? It's a hundred and fifty thousand. So then if you ta if you calculate the social security tax on that, you'd say, okay, that was 150,000 times 0 0.062. That's going to be the 9,300, but the same taxpayer also paid uh, the 2,480. And so the total being paid is 11,780, but there's supposed to be a cap of, uh, I think it's the 1 to 60,200 times 0 0.062. See, so there should be a cap of 9,932 social security that can be assigned to one social security number. And we paid minus 11,780. So now we have kind of an issue with an overpayment to Social Security because of be, be, because of the two W-2s that are adding together and didn't know about the cap being hit because the other one was at the other employment. So we could say like you'll see that you'll say like the software will catch that usually because you'll do the data input. That's why you want to make sure that you input the Social Security, even though it might not be something you see. So if I go to page two, I'm like, OK, everything looks no wait. What is this? What is this? That looks funny. It's not in my worksheet over here. And then I'd go, okay, that's coming from schedule three. There's schedule three. I, that, why is that there? That just popped up out of nowhere. And then we're going to go, all right, on page two, schedule three, excess social security. Oh, they paid excess. Why? Because there's two W-2s and therefore this, this amount was overpaid into the social security because they went over that cap. Now you have to also be careful when you have a married couple to assign the social security to the proper number because the social security, although they're married, the social security is, a tie, is tied to one person at a time. So maybe we'll take a look at that. But before we do, let's go back on over and say, all right, let's, I see that. Let's go back and get rid of the second one and say, let's delete this one. And let's do the second, the next scenario where we say, uh, let's do this one. Well, let's just do this one. So we have 170,000, but then the social security are, are different because now they hit the cap on one W-2 form and then the Medicare wages are different. So, okay, so, so if we see that, we're gonna go, okay, the W-2 was at wages, uh, what, what, what was it again, 170,000? 170,000, and then the withholdings, we're at the 42.5, box two, 42.5. That always has to be input. Now it's trying to guess that this one is correct and it got it right. How did it get it right? Because it's capped. So it's all, that one's at 170. This one has to be capped at 160,200. So it got it right that time. And then if I multiply that times 0 0.062, 160,200 times 0 0.062, that's got that right. So 9932. That's where this number comes from. And then we have the 180,000 
180,000. It tried to guess the Medicare wages. Now the Medicare wages are wrong, so I have to do the data input. How did it get it wrong? Well, it tried to pull in the Medicare wages from this 170 because it's not subject to the cap. However, it's possibly this this wages got decreased. How, why is that one different? Well, because we had in this case a a contribution to a retirement. We're going to imagine that one to a retirement account. So the retirement account box is checked off. So I'm going to go in and say, okay. Now, if I looked on my instructions, I think that should be in box. I'm going to imagine that was in box 12 here. And then, and I go, oh, my instructions had a D in it, let's say. So elective deferrals to a 401k cash or deferred agreement. So we're going to say, okay, so let's go back on over. Is there a spot in my data input to put that in here? Well, here's box 12 and I've got this nice drop down. I'm going to say it's an elective deferral of $10,000, 10,000. And then I can go back on over and say, okay, K Paso, what happened? There's the 170,000. So obviously we're going to pay federal income taxes on the, on box one. So I'm going to put this one job two is gone. We're at 170,000 and the withholdings then the second one is gone. The withholdings are now at, what did I say? 42.5, uh, 42.5. And then if I go back on over, standard deduction still at the 13,850. That brings us to taxable income 156, 150. So we're going to go, okay. 156, 150, page number two, calculated the tax at 30,876. So I'll plug that in here, 30,876. And we have the payments at 42,5. Okay, so bottom line, 11,624 on the refund. So, 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 so there, so there is that one. So, like I say, you might not always have an impact of, of, uh, the social security tax and Medicare tax, but it's possible you could if there's multiple W-2s. And if you explain this to a client, you might have to explain why these three boxes, which all indicate wages are different. And you might help them to kind of understand what their total compensation really is, which is generally closer, closer to box five, the Medicare wages, because it's not being reduced by the, by the amount that was put into the uh, taxes, for example. I mean, the 401k plan is what I meant to say, for example. Okay, so that's so so that you can you can look at, for example, this form to see it, some of these other uh, other things you can find in box 12, and then basically do more research on each of these items, and, and then drill down on that research if you wanted to. But for now, let's also just look at a married couple just to take a look at that scenario. Let's bring it back to our original scenario where it was 100,000 and we're going to say the withholding. Let's just remove the withholdings to start with and 100,000 here and Medicare is at 100,000 as well to 100,000. So now we're back to then our 100,000, 13,850. 86,150. So I'm going to say, okay, 100,000, our starting point, and 13,850, and 86,150, 86,150, page two, calculating the tax, 14,266. We're going to say, okay, tax 14,266, and I'm going to get rid of the payments for now. And so that's where that's going to be our starting point. So now let's say they get married. So now we've get married. So we're going to say, okay, so let's go on over and say single married now. So if we just move it to married and we keep it the same, we can see what has happened. Now we've got two individuals filing status, married filing jointly same 100,000. I haven't added another W-2 or anything. That gets us to the uh, standard deduction at 27,700. I can mirror that over here by saying now the standard deduction is for a married couple. And so that is that. That gets us to the 72,300 on the bottom line. Page two, calculating the tax. 
eight two three nine. So we're gonna say all right, eight two three nine, and so that gives us then the and I didn't withhold anything. So there it there that is. Okay, so now let's say that we had another W two. So if I go back on over, and this is something to that's important. If I say okay, another W two. And, and I, let's say I don't mark the spouse that it's going to, by the way, this retirement plan, if I check that checkbox would be important if there was a retirement plan on the checkbox so that your software will indicate that, the, that, you know, that is there to do any kind of cap calculations on the retirement plan. Okay. Let's say the second one was 80,000 and I'm not going to do, I won't do the withholdings. I'll just keep it here. So it calculated the 80,000 the social security and the Medicare properly. But if I didn't check off that it went to the spouse, then now I have 180,000 that the software might try to apply to one taxpayer, which means again, I went over the cap for the social security. So if I go back on over and I was to look at this, I can go, okay, let's take a look. Uh, we've got the 180,000. 20, uh, 27, seven. If I go to page two, uh, notice here, once again, it, it did this thing on, on schedule three. And if I look at it, I'm going to go, man, what did it, why, why did it do that? And it's because that I didn't apply the social security to the spouse, right? If I go back on over and I say, okay, this was the spouse's W2. Now the 180 isn't going over the cap because note, that the social security is applied to each social security number, not to the tax person itself. In other words, when someone is single, then they're their own entity. When they get together, they have united body, soul, and, and uh, tax return all together uh, for federal income taxes for the most part. But uh, for social security, they're still separate for each number because the social security benefits are going to be paid out based on social security number, not filing status. So therefore this, that becomes very important. So I could say, okay. And if you do your double checking over here in Excel, you'll see that, right? When you, if a mistake like that happens and now I can go, okay. So I double checked it. So there's the 180. So there's the 277 form three is now gone and there's uh, the tax on it. And I don't have that social security thing kind of popping up there. So, it's going to be important to assign the social security. We'll talk more about social security later, but it's important to assign the proper social security to the proper person. It's not going to have an impact possibly on the federal income taxes, but it could in that social security type of situation. And it's also something that you might get questions about with regards to people trying to maximize their social security benefits so that they get the when they get paid out in retirement it's properly allocated and we'll get into problems and issues with that when we get into self-employment tax for example uh, on a schedule c like who's gonna who who should be allocated the schedule c now also just realize with this married couple that that we we have to assign someone on line one and line two right and so and typically you're going to put the the man on line one and the woman on line two, but you have to, you could, so you have to do it that way because the software is going to say this person is the, is the taxpayer and the other one's going to be the spouse so that they can assign the two line items. So, so, so when you do the data input for most tax returns, that's going to be the language that's going to be used, right? So if I'm going to say spouse, that's the person that's on line two of the tax return typically a wife in a married couple situation. So that's the general uh, scenario. And like I say, if you if you uh, have something that's that's somewhat unusual on the W-2, typically you're going to have a data input place for it. Uh, if it's on the W-2 in your data input form for your software, and you can also go to the instructions and basically look at the letters for the line items that might be included, for example, in box 12. And then from there, you can further do your research to make sure that you're properly reporting anything that's somewhat more unusual on uh, the W-2 form. And some of those topics we'll talk more about in future presentations.